Electricast. Cars say a lot about who we are. It represents freedom for a lot of people. This season on Drive, I'm going to talk to all sorts of different people. I looked at car names. Yes. A- and yes. I found all the car names that have science or astronomically it's inspired. It's crazy. It's huge. It is. Okay, yes, sure. I happen to be CEO of Ford Motor Company. For me, it's all about cars, movement, and our mutual passion for things that get us around. This is Drive, and I'm Jim Farley. If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. Hold on to your butts. We are changing the course of history as we see it. That is what Westman demands. Now this affects Iris. Um, Iris, where are you? What you feel only matters to you. I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough. Iris, I have a tip for you. Don't take drugs! Or whatever movies with Wesley and Iris. What up and welcome to Or Whatever Movies. I'm your co-host Iris and I'm here with my older brother. Wesley. I don't know what that was. Uh, it was that Russian? I guess. Sure. Try it again. Wesley. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Try a, like a cowboy Wesley. Wesley. All right. Yeah, no. Today we're talking a movie from 2023 available on Apple TV Plus. A game that I played as a child. I would have to sneak into your room before you woke up to steal the Game Boy so I could play Tetris in bed. My feet would get all sweaty because it'd be all stressful and intense. Tetris. Do you wait? Number one, do you have sweat glands on your feet? That seems dangerous. Uh, only when I'm stressed out. Uh, that's weird. Did it sweat during Tetris the movie? Don't know. Uh, it's kind of cold right now. <laughs> Tetris, this is a bright and shiny movie on Apple TV, and you need a certain level of tech savviness to access this movie, right? I don't think it was released in theaters. So does the audience for this game need Tetris Explained? You mean like Tetris fans are watching Tetris? Right. So <laughs> no need for the Tetris preamble? Exactly. Well... I mean, yeah, I've got context for Tetris, but I knew zero, zilch, zippo about the backstory of how it came to the U.S. No, literally, in the movie, he explains the mechanics of the Tetris game. I mean, it was all baked in with info I didn't have, like Tetra, meaning four, all pieces having four pieces. I was like, whoa, wait, wait, what? It does have, that's cool. I didn't even realize that. Every single piece has four pieces, four blocks. Well, you would have to because you're building them out of parentheses. Or brackets or well, whatever. <laughs> right. The original Alexi version. For someone who's like ripped and all wiry and wound up, Taryn Egerton. Edgerton? I think it's Edgerton, but I think that's because of Joel Edgerton. It could be Edgerton. <laughs> <laughs> Taron Edgerton does a lot of talking. Yeah. He's like gone into these fast talking slick roles. Yeah. And a British dude mate. And a British dude mate who I just expect to throw down all the time, except he's walking around in like boxy suits to hide the fact that he's like ripped. <laughs> boxy, like Tetris. He's uh, the front runner for Wolverine. I made the mistake of telling Kelly Ray that he was also the front runner for James Bond. And I think he was contention in contention or his name was was uh, batted around. But Wolverine for sure. He has kind of a Tom Holland, like perpetually youthful vibe. I don't know that he could be a mature debonair Bond. Maybe. I definitely get the youthful thing. Then again, Tom Holland played Nathan Drake, who's all like battle weary and like all worn and, and uncharted. But I guess maybe that was like an origin story. I'd like I want to picture him all dirty and swearing as Wolverine. He is very young and shiny and glossy, but it fits for this character who is, I've decided, the second most earnest Mr. Rogers in history. <laughs> He, he is definitely, I, every time they were like, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers. I was like waiting for the joke. Nobody made the joke. Nope. It was because he was dealing with all of these international folks that had no context for sweater wearing. It, it's Mr. Rogers. Sad. Remember when the dude was like, what was it, Belikov? 
who's like, what is Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> and it was a joke. He was playing, but I, I didn't know for was sure. Was he? Because you wonder. I mean, obviously, he he has to know. He didn't know the difference between a PC and a game console. Yeah. So whatever. I mean, but those are not clearly defined lines, especially for Toby Jones. Does the Game Boy not constitute a console? No, it's a handheld. It was a completely new format or, or platform. Now the lawyers just put in catch-all language for all technology existing or will be devised in the future, blah, blah, blah. But the rights thing got really murky and confusing. It did. I lost the thread. I mean, I worried up top that this was going to be more like a documentary. Uh, how did you feel about the 8-bit transitions and the score and the voiceover? It had kind of a cheap doc feel, and I worried how much they expected us to get all involved in the politics and the shady dealings and track all that stuff. The 8-bit stuff was a lot less annoying and intrusive than in You People. <laughs> But I did notice that they used it to cover up some missing links in the story. Like, they used it all over that car chase because that car chase was just crazy, just jointed. And they were like, well, let's just throw in some 8-bit interstitials and it'll be it'll track. You can't tell me that that car chase or the airport chase tracked for you. I mean, at that point, I was just in Argo land. And I was like, go, go. It was, it was fine. I did note that it was it was the gray man sped up style, though. What did you call it? Oh, like a the, ramp up? Uh, Speed ramp, the, yeah, the speed ramping. I mean, it was ex excessive, and that's where you finally got the idea that this is more Mario Kart than reality. And so when the cars pixelated, I was like, huh. And Kelly Ray was like, oh, that's kind of fun. And, and the uh, the transitions saved them the of having to get archive footage of buildings in the 80s. And it's got like a pixelated building and a dude with a mustache. And then you're like, oh, I guess we're in Japan. Or I guess we're in Moscow. <laughs> It took me a while to realize that we were in Japan. And I didn't understand why, why if Hank could speak Japanese and understand Japanese, he he refused to speak with the Nintendo Japanese CEO in Japanese. Because uh, Taron Edgerton, no, Hank knew how to. Taron Edgerton, not so much. And I think he only knew, like, the lovely platitudes for his daughter or whatever. Like, I'm sorry, and please sing me that song, and, and it's time for bed, and stuff like that. Well, he definitely spoke to them in English, but he understood, ostensibly, everything that the little kids were saying. Yeah, but you, you pretend you know as well as anybody. You don't understand Jack that those girls are saying you're just like uh-huh no that's great <laughs> you think dad was just playing a role yeah so you always say that apple movies so far in this review said glossy to suggest that maybe tetris was a movie made by a computer for a computer company studio you you have this thing against apple tv plus movies Apple as a company, as a product line, is very streamlined, very seamless, and it all feels very clean. Russia wasn't, it was gray and it was dour, uh, but it wasn't dirty. Everybody, it was all crisp or whatever. There was no graffiti, anything like that. Uh, even though the cars were old, they're, you know, even for the time, they were polished and all that good stuff and glistening. Uh, nice, tidy ponytails and junk. It was very efficient and Japan was Japan, but it just ha had this feel that everything is sort of sterilized and so i did expect this to be kind of high definition boring but uh it wasn't that like it, it i got drawn in and and had fun it's definitely fun it's definitely engaging it might have a tv movie feel to it and that's what you mean by glossy and clean and sterile and tidy i think but also i believe that tetris was perhaps brought down by the supporting cast performances <gasps> Really? Yeah, I mean, I felt like Taron Edgerton's Hank kind of knew what he was. I mean, characters are nothing if they're not consistent, and he was consistently intrepid and had lots of moxie and found his way into every single meeting, and he was the tenacious, fearless, and also kind of humorous American cowboy type, you know, going into all of these foreign places and whatnot. But the Japanese banker in the opening scene, the lead... KGB officer guy, um, <laughs> Hank's wife, Akemi, maybe even, sorry, Toby Jones, kind of overacty. And... Really? I mean, do you think that that's the, a fault of the actors and how overly hammy they played it? Or do you think that was uh, more the movie and how they were positioned or how their stories were unfurled? Hard to know where the fault lies. I think that when you've got actors that shouldn't be talking so much, don't give them so much talking. <laughs> 
There's a lot of talking in this movie. There's a lot of boardroom meetings, a lot of conference room meetings, a lot of switching back and forth between cell-like conference rooms in Russia. And also, give the KGB guy at least one murder. No, this is not that kind of movie. No, in this movie, the Russians know that the game designer guy, uh, Gary Oldman, you know, he tried to license his game or whatever, or he got involved in the dealings beyond his station. And so they fired him and they evicted him, but they didn't arrest or murder him. It's very clean and very nice. And Russia's like, you are bad. And here now you will be outcast, but good luck. And here's a croissant. <laughs> that was every single scene with the lead KGB guy. What was his name? Valentin. He was like, next time you will vanish. Now, please go and leave the country safely and have right. a safe flight. And the, the worst they're going to do is they're going to punch Belikov in the face and he'll be like slightly tinted and moisturized for the next scene. Like he wailed on him. <laughs> they beat up Hank too. Yeah, because it's an Apple TV movie because it's fine. So when Sasha shows up and Kelly Ray saw her turn pretty early on, she was like, yeah, that's she's not what she says she is. And I was like, really? She's like so earnest and sweet or whatever. Like, hey, oh, and I might have. The bl- moment she popped up and started using all these English words incorrectly, <laughs> I was like, oh, man. She was bright and bubbly. And then when she turned secret agent, I was like, oh, OK. I mean, she got more uh, determined and she put her hair back in a no nonsense ponytail that, ma- you know, with a, a beret or whatever that matches her gun. But she was different enough that i was like oh that's a pretty good uh, thing you know when she arrests a uh, russian guy and so that was enough of a turn so i didn't feel like she was one note she was maybe two note like and belikov who was the sternest suit wearing possibly kgb you know don't cross that dude or he's gonna kill you and get his suit dirty when he kind of softened and was like get this to Taryn edgerton you know and good luck and pats him on the shoulder and junk i was like oh he kind of he's different and <laughs> maybe this is bare bones expectation this is eight bit you know smiley frowny smiley frowny but it was enough that i didn't feel that they were completely boring like i liked the belikov character which is in contrast to the fact that i hated him up top i was like you bastard like you're totally he's the guy who you know doesn't speak english for half the movie so frustrating in every single one of those early meetings like hank can't even just explain what's happening nobody knows what's happening and it's just getting worse the more everyone meets and talks and stuff it was so frustrating belikov was a personification of the iron curtain just impenetrable and interestingly he is our hero our kami lead is our is that can i say that i don't think so i don't know shoot but they're bad right now they're they're messing with ukraine so they're bad they had a a russian communist hero and a russian like next gen soviet hero and alexi like the russians are the heroes of this movie Mm, sure some of them Swiper no swiping was like he he all he needed was a cane and he had a slicked back hair and his drivers or whatever and his appropriately creepy eyes <laughs> and, and his greed his greed yeah. he didn't care about the country the people who cared about the country whether they were from the old regime or the new were the ones who were heroic his greed single handedly brought down even though he blamed it on Sasha he brought down the Soviet Union by Pretty much Tetris did well that's what the movie you know suggests. And there's been a lot of debate about this, about the veracity of some of these claims. And they'll freely admit that the car chase didn't happen. Part of it was a video game and Mario Kart style. But, you know, I'm sure that there were some tense backroom meeting conversations or whatever. Like, I want rights. You don't get rights. I want rights. He has rights, you know. But I think it was embellished enough. When you go to Russia or any country for that matter on a tourist visa to perform business and then they like and then the secret service approaches you and it's like you should go home don't you go home no it's about money it's about making money for the family and to hell with your daughter's piano recital or her obon dance and that's that's really what it was it was just about money and his like american determination where he's like i'm not gonna let a door stop me honey i'm gonna go go in there and uh oh i'm having a trouble you come on in here and help me out you know so capitalist cowboy boots like bust down doors. Yeah, and, and it's lucky because we're you know set up. We're meant to know how dangerous it is. And I, I did. I felt the danger, but he was going to go in anyway because that's what we Americans do. We go in and get stuff done, and then we have a drink about it later. 
But the marketers position this movie as this intrepid group that's determined to bring Tetris to the masses. Like it's some kind of societal balm or something. Like it's that it's necessary for the next evolution of gaming. I mean, when it was at the CES show and presumably up for sale or whatever, but they needed to distribute it legitimately. It might have been easier to pirate it because the other guys didn't even know that it was pirated and they're just doing their communist thing or whatever. And they're like, no, we want to do this the right way. I want to make everybody happy. And he's like, what is Nintendo? But all the politics of Soviet Russia of the late 80s was lost on us as kids. We were like, look, pointy spire buildings or whatever, Kremlin style architecture and stuff. And and the music was, I got a guess, Russian. But, you know, we didn't really care about the politics, although I, maybe it should have been interesting. Like, hey, just post Cold War, when Gorbachev is still in power before the collapse of the Soviet Union, we have a distinctly Russian game. I think the R was backwards, Russian style in Tetris. And we didn't care because it was just a fun <laughs> shapes game that people of all ages could enjoy. Oh, Russian style. I'm assuming that the theme song is like a Russian folk song, considering that's what Alexei loved to listen to. Yeah, I guess so. But man, they, they played that throughout. Did you, you heard echoes of the theme constantly, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. They had like the techno version and like the dub version and yep. like the classical version. Tetris. I remember, you know, you remember it because of the game. And when they announced it, everybody was like, no, not Tetris. Like they're going to be blocks fighting each other or falling in love or something like they did on a Stephen Colbert sketch. But it was, you know, the behind the scenes stuff of Tetris. And that was cool. You got to see the back room of Russian politics discussions and money changing hands and the holy seattle nintendo inner sanctum hey it's kaylee cuoco for priceline ready to go to your happy place for a happy price well why didn't you say so just download the priceline app right now and save up to 60 percent on hotels so whether it's cousin kevin's kazoo concert in kansas city go kevin or becky's bachelorette bash in bermuda you never have to miss a trip ever again so download the priceline app today your savings are waiting go to your happy place for a happy price Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow, the new limited series based on the best selling novel. Stream it on March 29th with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. I gotta say, man, I knew it was coming. And he's like, only two people in the world have seen what you've seen. And I was like, here it comes. And they unveil the Game Boy. And I had real reverence for that moment. Aww. Because when Game Aww. Boy, when I read about it in Game Pro Magazine, now defunct. And I was like, this is going to change the world. And I was very excited. They unveil the wow. Game Boy. And it's all boring and white and kind of Apple product looking. But uh, that was the original one before Game Boy Color or Advance or any of the stuff you could see through. The original Game Boy was the bomb. And I did. They packaged it with Tetris. I got that game. because I got Tetris because I bought a Game Boy first gen. I could have sworn we got Super Mario World and Tetris. Well, at the time, I thought that they were selling individual consoles packed with a single game because that's how, how all those janky handheld things. It was one game. It was Super Mario Brothers or whatever. So I wanted Super Mario Land. And I remember telling people, I'm going to get the Super Mario Game Boy when I didn't know that the cartridges were interchangeable like an NES. Okay, but am I mistaken that we had that the Game Boy came with both or did it come with Tetris and you also got Super Mario? Land? I honestly do not recall at that time because those I didn't buy those games. They were all purchased for me. How we got it, I don't know. But I cannot imagine buying Tetris being like, I need Tetris. So I think it came with Tetris and then we got Super Mario Land through much begging and crying. I was about to say, how did you coerce mom and dad to get this for you? I don't know. They were just trying to get something to occupy us, to shut us up for a while. And, you know, we were very fortunate. Like, I had lots of those consoles, at least the ones that I wanted to. And Game Boy was a big thing, man. And I felt the stirrings in my belly when it was covered with the little handkerchief or whatever. I was like, oh, man. I didn't have a Game Boy. You all like to talk about Grandy Gadzooks and horse shame me and stuff, but I didn't have a Game Boy. <laughs> no one knows what you're talking about. You didn't need it. You had apples and a living steed, a companion who would protect you from gunfire, who would take like take a bullet for you, man. My horse? Yeah, Rocky? your horse. Okay, so we're going to put it to a poll. The year is 1990, let's say. Something like that, right? I had a Game Boy. Iris had a horse. Who wins? 
You had Game Boy, you had a Sega Genesis, you had a Turbo Graphics. Yeah. How many times did I ride your freaking horse? Never. You had no interest in riding Rocky. Right, but you had interest in, in playing Game Boy, Genesis, and Turbo Graphics 16. That's not my fault. I had to sneak into your room to steal the Game Boy while you were sleeping. Yeah. And when when it came to the other consoles, I had to sit and watch you play because you would never let me play. The dude was like, 8-bit graphics? Of course. No color? Oh, no, that, that'll be later. That, that takes too much battery power. But you get this and this and this all for $89. And I was like, whoa, that's cheap. How much did that horse cost? Uh huh. So anyway, um, eighty nine dollars seems like cheap, but that was a lot back then. Yep. But worth it. Did we get any other games? Oh, Paperboy. Paperboy, I had. I had Terminator Two. I can't even think what else we had. Paperboy was the bomb. It was good. It was so good that I was perfectly content in our, our little monochrome world. Like I never got a Game Boy Color or Advanced or anything like that. That was just my jam. Who would have thunk? The Tetris could be so exciting. It was addictive. And uh, I have beaten Tetris. When you do the levels where it increases in speed, you go to level nine. And if you can hold out for like 40 pain in the bricks or whatever, it's you get the little rocket ship. I've seen the rocket ship. I didn't achieve it every time, but a few times I saw it. Really? Yeah. But the thing oh, is. I always plateaued. The thing is, Tetris only exists on Game Boy for me. They moved in the correct order. They weren't the the colors weren't distracting. Um, only use a single button on Tetris to make a uh, clockwise rotation, and anything else feels weird to me. Like just the pacing is off. Being able to do that last minute twist into impossible positions only ever Tetris on Game Boy. Which is I'm glad they focused on that in this movie that it was all about the handheld, all about the handheld because Game Boy was going to be packaged with Tetris. And when he sends Gary Oldman the uh, Game Boy Success package. With the tickets to the U.S., it was via Game Boy. And the original dude is like, I only play PC. That's how I know. And that's how it was created. But for me, it was only Game Boy, which is Aww. the right Tetris. And a perfect platform. Um, all that stuff is true. Like, a lot of the stuff was embellished and, and some of the more Argo-esque kind of things. The problem with this movie is there's no portmanteau for Argo and Tetris or the social network and Tetris. Like, I can't cleverly combine those titles. Nothing rhymes with Tetris. Tet See? Keep te social. Tet Keep te trying. <laughs> te Tetris Social Network. But I felt, I definitely felt the drama and I had fun with the intrigue and the car chases and the spies. Like, you, weren't you terrified when Gary Oldman and wife got the knock on the door and they pushed? Why do you uh, keep calling him Gary Oldman? Are you talking about Alexi? He looks like a young Gary Oldman. He kept, I kept looking at him and be like, man, he looks like a young Gary Oldman. Okay. So anyway. Why was he so ragey? Why was Mr. Tetris so ragey? He was like, Mr. Rogers, I do not do small talk. Like, why was he such a punk? Because mere association with Mr. Rogers was a crime. And Mr. Rogers was pushy. He was like, you ever try and say no to an American? Right. It's like impossible. They don't go away. He's like a little gnat buzzing around. Hey, you want to do dinner? Hey, you want to go out to a club? Hey, you want to hang out? Hey, you want to license me Tetris? Yeah, Americans are annoying. Uh, especially to like old gen communist Russians. I mean, I think that he was part, he was like, you're dangerous. Like you're literally dangerous for me to have around. And also you're kind of a, you're kind of annoying. And also, I think he kind of found him charming. Yeah. You could get me and, fired and get all my stuff put in a box. And get my family moved out. Yeah. Get the KGB to threaten my children. Yeah, that's not cool. My biggest question is, oh, God. Did you not want Kevin to be murdered by the KGB, like, constantly? <laughs> Kevin? Kevin? Father, please do not refer to me as Kevin. Okay, Kevin. Mr. Maxwell to you, buddy. Mr. Maxwell is weird, too, because as along with Mr. Rogers, in 1990, I had an English teacher. Didn't you have Mr. Maxwell? Oh, yeah. With the drooly lips, the drooly side mouth. And he had the yellow and black tie. And so he looked like a crash test dummy. Yeah, I don't remember that tie, but he made a lasting impression on me. That dude hated me. Why, how did Mr. Maxwell make an impression on you? Oh, he insisted that if you ever need to strike a word, you don't scribble it out. You just w draw one elegant line through it, and then you move on. That sounds very Mr. Maxwell efficient. Yeah, it's it's I I'm channeling my inner Mindy Kaling right. and saying <laughs> that all word striking needs to be done with one line, and then you move on. Right, that's the uh, MS Word strike through. Uh, and also that drooling can be contained. 
Like, you don't have to drool into your old age. You can probably dob that. Like, handkerchief that up, Mr. Maxwell. Anyway, what are we talking about? So, Gary, Mr. Tetris Oldman, was not the meek personality that he seemed to be for the whole movie. He was like Belikov in that he was glowering and sullen and quiet at the top. And then he was, like, all smiling at the disco and stuff. And I was afraid that he was going to be tackled and killed in front of Mr. Rogers on the floor. But he had his wiles and he was strategizing and ultimately was the getaway driver in the car chase but he did the anton sugar fire distraction like hey let's yeah. blow something up over here so we can go fax some stuff over there that was genius <laughs> and he was so slick about it he was like hanging out by the door jam he's like hi and she's <laughs> like hey <laughs> Uh, and then he did he th- did he throw the evidence in the wastebasket yeah. like in the hallway? Yeah, the, like the, all the, discoverable. The wastebasket thing, but it was all swinging or whatever. And she she like came out to give him a dirty look or whatever. He got away with it clean, like Apple TV clean. Yeah, those the Russians they're all talk. There's no actual threat nope. in Tetris, which they're... means that there were no real stakes in this movie. But it was fun. You don't know, man. Maybe the real, maybe this is like the Russian collaboration. They had to license the the rights to this movie or whatever too, so they cleaned it up. And in real life, these dudes all got Navalny because you know, Naval. That's awful. It's so but, awful. Considering but, that's like happening right now. I know it. But Kevin, God, I wanted him to die so badly. And I thought if there was going to be a Russian Russian casualty, if we were going to see them really throw down, that had to be the dude. And unfortunately it wasn't because he ended up being a real dude. And God, he's so deplorable. I hated him worse than I hated the Russian like swiper, no swiping. Kevin was a punk, but he was also smart and clever. And he liked leveraging people into positions where they had no advantage. Manage, right where he can just screw them out of like right to their face and like sneer when he does it or whatever but he had to do that like me with using my personality on girls before they ever see my face because that's not my strong suit kevin had to use his intellect like the other guy said you know nothing if not my brain like that's what i the only thing that i can rely upon in this world because kevin fights like a bitch remember when he got into that fight and he was With like Stein? he was like patting him on the shoulder against Toby Jones that was pathetic <laughs> he got beat up i don't think he even landed a punch oh god he did he landed several like bear paw pats on Toby Jones's back it was embarrassing but th- those rich kids man yeah and dad could care less and uh, his dad was uh robert i guess who looked like steven seagal like modern day he was totally the a gary not a gary oldman <laughs> he was totally a colin farrell like penguin arch crim, arch criminal type all portly and conniving yeah and i didn't know if that was that real dude or if he had prosthetics on his face to make him more like you know <laughs> How was he? <laughs> he was like the walrus and the carpenter from Alice in Wonderland. And he did the fat dude, the fat dude bees. Yeah, like all he's all blustery. All blustery. That's a good movie for. That's a good adjective for this movie. It was all blustery <sighs> and Americans, and, and, man, and engaging, and it had all kinds of momentum. Which I was glad that it had those things because it didn't have. It wasn't like the genuine article. I don't think it had all the pieces, but it but it was fun and I was nostalgic and I give it a good. Yep. I give this movie handheld rights. I mean for how much? I don't know, but we can watch watch it on we can watch Tetris on our phones is irony. I don't know if that's ironic. That might be Alanis Morissette irony. But I liked this movie. I'll give it an all right. Uh very surprising for Tetris. We are looking for the new releases that you will deign to see. And this one, I was like, oh, man, this could go badly. And I don't think it's making waves, I think, because of the license they took. Oh, get it license for uh, this this storytelling. Wow. But uh, I had fun for sure. And I thought it was very enjoyable and a an embellishment that no one seems to uh, deny that it was, you know, just a little slightly elevated and made it fun and interesting. And there's enough of a backbone there so that I wasn't mad at it. Yeah, it was somehow OK, given that Hank, Alexi and Maya were all executive producers. Like yeah. I was like, OK, well, at least we know we got the only honest people in the room actually behind the film. So right. that's our discussion on Tetris, a movie from 2023 available on Apple TV+. Plus. None of our other reviews are based on games whatsoever, are they? Yeah. 
we got uh, the Tom Holland one. Uncharted? Yeah. Yeah. But Uncharted is, is a different game than Tetris. If there are any like wildly successful video game movies, we should maybe talk about that. I mean, if anything were like, you know, the first billion dollar grossing movie of 2023 or whatever and was dominating the box office for weeks on end. If you have suggestions, hit us up 818-835-0473 or whatever movies at gmail.com. You could also message us at Instagram at or whatever movies. We love to hear from you. We also love your patronage at Patreon and your five star reviews wherever you get your podcasts. So thanks again and we'll see you next time. Welcome, explorers of the human experience. This is Let's Talk Soul, and I'm your host, Claudia Monticelli. We're not afraid of the great mysteries of existence here. Soul versus consciousness, we're on it. Spirituality versus science, we've got that covered too. Join us in navigating these profound topics with wisdom, curiosity, and a dash of audacity. Whether you're a spiritual veteran or just starting your journey, Let's Talk Soul is your passport to the unknown. Let's Talk Soul, diving into the depths of the human spirit. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. If you're a working professional wondering what's next for your career, you've come to the right place. Whether you're looking for a promotion, growth, or a potential career transition, look no further. With over 30 years working in a variety of industries, I share my insider knowledge with those ready to get ahead on Career Advancement with Craig Ansell. Tune in to get your strategies for success. Electric Acid.